Hello winning game fans! Indie Games as a Service continues to be a shining light with the big content patches of January expanding upon some fan favourite entries, although I do have a bigger game or two in the mix to keep things interesting. The Japanese Metroidvania Toho Luna Knight is one of the standouts in the genre as of 2021, finally releasing the Cerno boss fight for Steam after it was available elsewhere, so take on the Ice Witch in this thriller of a battle. I've given special mention to the action-adventure title Prodigal in recent days, with an update titled The Engineer and the Deputy releasing last month, narrated in character, so check it out. gonna let you make my update sound boring. Move! Obviously I, Siska the Destroyer, am in this new patch. Tremble before me as the Tyrant Queen of Vance Point returns. <laughs> and just wait till you see my dungeon. It's gonna be super awesome! Try your best not to die, okay? Oh, and I might just have a couple of tricks up my sleeves, but guess you'll have to see. <laughs> Maybe Hugh will stop being such a wimp in this patch. Not! Ugh, it's so lame fighting with such a baby. Maybe if I were to uh, push him a bit, he'd... Ah! Never mind me. Uh, let's see. Next up is uh, fishing. Boring. <laughs> Who even cares about some fishing mini game? Next. <laughs> A jeweler with rings. I wonder if she'd have any to make Hugh stop being such a loser. <laughs> Good one, Siska. And... what? Last coin. Weird. Whatever, it's probably not important. Anyway, that's all we have, folks. Hope you're prepared, cause Siska the Destroyer is back! And she's ready to take over Vance Point! <laughs> uh, is she gone? Okay, well, I guess that's it. We hope you enjoy the update, and if you see Siska roaming around, well, good luck. And see you next time, when we're back to talk about spies and charlatans. This video is brought to you by the turn-based tactics title Fort Triumph, essentially fantasy XCOM, but with a touch of Heroes of Might and Magic as well. It released out of early access in April last year and has been chugging along, with the developer releasing one patch after the next, mostly on balancing and bug fixes to make it a better experience. There is a certain irreverence to the tone, leaning a little more in the comedic direction, but you're still tasked with taking out a great evil threatening the land. Awesome tactics combat with environmental interactions, combined with the overworld exploration of Pedro MM and some procedurally generated elements, makes this a joy. One of the most impressive retro first-person shooters in development is Wrath Aeon of Ruin, getting content update number 3, which added a brand new level titled The Hollow, a new trinket, a new enemy and updated enemy encounters for previous levels, with this shaping up quite nicely. I remembered playing on my own way back when at the start of this YouTube channel in one of my early videos and my oh my how things have changed since then. This got an update titled Rekindled which came as a nice surprise, revamping the visuals, enhancing the gameplay and UI and even adding additional playable characters so it was a nice way of things coming full circle and I had to pay it forward.
The survival title Green Hell has been tremendously popular, which did have the Spirits of Amazonia Part 1 update, adding story content serving as a prequel to the main game which is of interest. Remember when I said things had a funny way of coming full circle? Well, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night Classic Mode is the example of this, where the friend favourite Iga Vania title got an update that essentially turned it into old school Castlevania with a more linear, level based structure. Still using that strange 2.5D visual style, which is a bummer, but I guess the 8 bit alternative would have just turned it into Curse of the Moon, but it's nice to see this game getting constant updates due to the success of the Kickstarter campaign. A survival base builder entry that has been getting its share of fans in early access is Volcanoids, where you pilot gigantic drills and delve into the earth searching for resources, releasing the combat update where the focus is fairly obvious. This added more enemy types, reworked the core combat system, and added a ton of enhancements where I do like the steampunk theme in particular. The Metroidvania title Record of Ludos Bore Be Lit in Wonder Labyrinth that also released the Stage 3 plus 4 update, adding two new areas with new enemies, boss fights and challenges, but again, I still think that it's very strange for games in this genre to be in early access. The 3D visual novel title Nico Barista that impressed in 2020 and has given to us for free an episode titled Walking to the Sky, focusing on two characters and their friendship, and according to the developer, is the second of all three planned updates to so one more to watch out for. I noted that the action roguelite with Play-Doh visuals going under was one of these standout titles of 2020 who dropped the working from home update out of nowhere, adding a new imposter mode as a nod to imposter syndrome where you play through the dungeons sequentially rather than being booted back to the hub area in between. They also added the bestiary, where you get to find out more about the enemies, the ability to change outfits for our protagonist with new skills, curses, weapons and secrets, so plenty of good stuff all for free, so go support them if you have not. The roguelite deck builder Quantum Protocol released in November last year and impressed with the stylish cyberspace visuals and despite not being an early access title that put out the Mage update, essentially a new character which focuses on spells.
As with all character-based deck builders, this represents a ton of new content, making it one to check out. The first larger title on the list is Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition Lords of the West, an expansion pack to a remastered game where the original is from 1999, so that's insane to me. Burgundy is but a newborn power. The barons moaned a moanful, deposed Henry, leaving his kingdom in tatters. I have a soft spot for RTS games, always looking for the next title to cause a renaissance, but it appears that people do love the classics, so remasters may be the way to go. There are two new civilizations, new units, and three new campaigns, so it's nice to see the continued support for this. The Prison Architect IP has been handed over to Paradox, which is quite a large setup, so perhaps it's not that indie anymore, but there is continued support with the latest being going green, adding agriculture to the compound, allowing prisoners to grow fruit, vegetables, and more. Of course, that includes contraband herbs and ingredients for alcohol, so some interesting pluses and minuses in this. Plague Inc. The Cure was teased a little while back and is finally released, being a free DLC which flips the entire game on its head. While the original was about creating a super virus to wipe out all life on Earth, the cure has used stemming infections, imposing lockdowns and contact tracing to control the spread of the virus, being more or less what we have been experiencing over the past year or so, so do try your hand at this to see how you do. The TV producer simulator Not For Broadcast is very cleverly made with satirical FMV to match, releasing episode 2 which is of interest. Wolf. It's the 140th day of war. Our main headlines tonight. Company of heroes. Skirmishes on land and sea again today. We know that for many of you, these are frightening times. Minister Volzovich, please! You people are f***ing starving, pal! Well, you've always been a cynic. But most importantly, what should you, the public, think about the new team membership cards? Oh, yeah. Fantastic. I'm a I haven't huffed glue for months. Won't blow me down! You have my word. We will never censor ideas. Everyone, we don't have long. Time is running, it's running out. out. Absolutely right. That is all we have time for. Okay. A bit of dangerous language there. Sorry about that. <laughs> In line with the 5th anniversary of the Metroidvania title, Rebi Rebi, this developer did release the 5th anniversary Orchestra DLC with 25 tracks re-recorded, adding new costumes for the characters, and updating the Before Nyx Adventure DLC which allows you to replay as the character Coco, so with this, perhaps it's time to look at what's next. I like the candid way that the developers of Guardian Quest have presented this trailer, which culminates in the announcement and release of Realm Mode. 
a shorter note-based adventure that is more akin to your classic roguelite rather than the more expensive RPG feel of the original campaign mode. Take your party through procedurally generated dungeons, earning renown to unlock artifacts, where the update also includes the usual balancing changes and the addition of a new hero and the blood bending warlock. Fantastic update with even more to come this year, and I'm always happy to showcase this game since it's making Singapore proud. Top billing goes to Dead Cells Fatal Falls, the game that keeps on expanding one update after the next with this being their second paid DLC experiment. This adds three new areas, the Fractured Shrines, Undying Shores and the Mausoleum, with seven new weapons, one new boss, new traps, enemies and more. Kind of amazing how they continue to add and add to this game, but it does serve their very large audience so it makes sense, but once again for making an already fantastic game even better, this takes the number one spot. To see more of the big picture, check out these awesome videos and I will see you after the jump.